And Brother Scott was talking about, you know, those old old days. Amen. With some most of those songs out of them old old days tonight. Amen. They have a few new ones yet. But uh, yes, it does bring back a lot of good memories. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Thank the Lord for it. Praise God. How many know God's still the same? Amen. Yesterday, today, and forever. Praise the Lord. He doesn't ever change. Amen. People change. Amen. And you said, Brother Green, I haven't changed. I bet I could go dig your uh, your old uh, box of pictures. <laughs> Man, I can see every kind of change that you went through in your life. We done that at work here a while back. I took a bunch of pictures of me and Sister Green over the years as uh, the change came. Amen. It's a different style of clothes we wore. Amen. Yeah, I got some of them leisure suit pictures. Amen. Amen. With that leisure suit on, that big long collar stuck out over the top of it of the shirt. They don't long. That collar will reach halfway through your shoulder. Amen. Amen. And uh, had all kinds of different hairstyles. Amen. Amen. Had a Conway Woody look. I've had the, what do they call that, Jerry, Jerry Curl Roll look. He just walked down to the side of it. I've had the Afro look. Amen. And all of them work like this, like y'all like it. Amen. Don't tell me there ain't no changes, man. Give me some changes, man. Amen. Oh, yeah. Sister Green had that hair do, amen, first. Look up like this, see that come down right about there. Amen. <laughs> parted here, went there, and then parted there, and went there. Amen. <laughs> then had the heart to heart look. Y'all already know that. Amen. <laughs> So there's a lot of changes in, in between now and then. Amen. Amen. But I'm glad to know the Lord had not changed one bit in all that. Amen. Amen. Your style of clothes has changed. Amen. And uh, uh, the kind of car you drive, you just go with the flow. You can't, you know, some things you just can't do nothing about. You know, sometimes you go to the store, you can't help but just buy what they got there. You know? <laughs> I mean, whatever the style of dress is, ladies, don't you, don't you hate it? You go there and you're stuck with whatever they have got out for that year, you know. You know, and there are only a few stores that you can go to to find that kind that you really like because it ain't the style that is today, you know. Amen. You know, you have to go find, you have to go to Sears and go back there, amen, into the ladies' department, amen, at one section, get back there in the corner, we might find you a dress. Amen. The rest of them, I don't know what they call that. Amen. They ain't never clothes there to cover nothing. Amen. Amen. And, and it, but you know, God's been the same. And you know, God wants us to be constant. He wants us to be instant in season and out of season. He wants us to be the same. Amen. One thing about it, my faith has not changed from the time I got saved. Amen. And my belief has not changed. I still believe in the same God that saved me then. It's the same God that I'm serving today. I believe in the same baptism. I believe in the same healing. I believe in the same prophecy. I believe in the same uh, doctrine that I was saved into. I, I haven't changed one thing in all these years. Amen. It's still the same gospel as it was back then. It's the same gospel today. Now, I know a lot of people that I have grew up with, they changed their gospel. Amen. A new fan come along, a new thing come along, and jump on board with it, none with it. Amen. And uh, I haven't changed my message one bit because I believe it's the same message that the Lord gave from the very beginning. And it's the same message. So I'm going to preach the same message that I've always preached. Amen. Now, they, you know, there was a lot of these new preachers that's come out in the past uh, 20 
30 years, I guess 30 years. How, how old is uh, TBN? 30 years? Ain't they celebrating their 35th? Anybody know? Nobody watches. 40 years. 40 years. Amen. And celebrating their anniversary, you know, with so many years. And uh, a lot of the preachers they have on there, they, they started just about that time, you know, and preaching this message about being positive in your belief. Amen. And, uh, of course, we call it, name it, claim it, and all this other kind of stuff. But, but you know what? I'm just like Brother R.W. Shambach. I was preaching that thing for them boys to seem bored. Amen. I was preaching that message that, amen, you believe in your heart, confess with your mouth, and you shall have whatever you say in the name of the Lord. You can speak to the mountain, and the mountain of being removed. The power of God is mighty even in my mouth. If you believe upon the Lord and speak that word of faith, then God blind the eyes will be opened, the pain will be healed. God will minister to the needs. Thank God. That's the same message. They met and preached for 40 years. They met. Thank God. And there's nothing new about it. Praise the Lord. Because I learned in the early years how that, 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 uh, through with many weaknesses and I, I find myself trapped in a, in a loop going through the same thing over and over again. And until I learned the strength of overcoming that, I was continually in that loop. Amen? Have you ever felt like you were just uh, wandering in the wilderness, walking around the mountain, and ain't going nowhere? Amen? It took you 40 years to walk around that same mountain instead of just go ahead and crossing over and going into the land of victory. Amen? Have you ever been there? You know what I'm talking about? Praise God. And because uh, a few people around me wanted uh, to give me uh, uh, direction, but it wasn't good instruction. Amen? It wasn't good instruction. A lot of that, and God had to move me out of it after a while. Amen. That's when I met Sister Green, amen, and moved out of that situation. Amen. I got in a place where I could hear from God. Amen. Amen. But they would always tell me, you be careful. The devil will get in there and make a mess out of it. I thank you, Lord, have mercy. You can't do nothing without the devil messing. Well, what are you going to do? Just give up and quit? Then that's what it sounded like to me. They said, you just well give up and quit trying to do anything with God. Because if you're not careful, you'll get in the mountain. I can't be cautious and get up, amen, and climb the mountain. I, I can't be cautious and swim the, the roaring river. Brother, I've got to take the leap of faith and go on out and wade out into the deep. And wade out a little bit deeper. to be positive that everything you do in the name of the Lord God will be in it. Amen. I was always warned that if you're not careful the devil will get in it. Amen. I, that, they they themselves had that battle in their life and they wanted me to walk in the same footsteps they were walking in and uh, God moved amen, moved me out of that situation. Yeah, I believe today if I'd ever stayed in that situation, and if I'd have, if I'd have chose, amen, uh, to marry another girl from my home church in Illinois, I would have never done most of the things I've done in, in the ministry, amen. You think that's harsh, but uh, uh, that's true, amen. Amen. God, after all, loves a choice. You don't know that? Amen. Stars didn't have nothing to do with it. It ain't the moon's fault. Amen. The moon said, they, they don't blame me. I'm just hanging out every night. Amen. Don't blame me for your mistakes. You're the one that's choosing. <laughs> and the Lord wants us to make the right choice. That's the right choice to love Him. Can you say amen? I better get started. Amen. Amen. I want you to continue to pray about my work. 
man, I told you they was uh, going to let, let me hire some help. And I went through all the process of trying to get somebody through the hoops that might hire. And uh, then they said, uh, no, everything's going to hold. And uh, I, I told Sister Green I can't take much more because I do very good on, on, on the weekends to get the rest of it. You know, I feel pretty good getting to go to church. I feel good. About Tuesday, I can barely crawl when I go home at night. Amen. I don't know what it is. It's just uh, walking that concrete or just having to stay on my feet all day long and run, 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 do this, do that. That is just, uh, it just hurts, you know. Uh, you know, it's like that old joke. Hey, Doc, when I do this, it causes this to hurt. And he says, well, don't do that. Amen. <laughs> Well, you know, I can't do that. <laughs> I can't, I got, that's what the job is. So y'all pray for me and pray for me because uh, me and Sister Green been talking about it. Uh, amen. I, you know, I may have to, uh, if, God, if God goes that way, if, if that's, it continues to go that way, amen, I told her, I said, well, then the Lord will just have to open up some doors and I'll be back full time evangelizing out to full time on the field because I, there's not much else that I can do to work yet to, to, uh, make, a, to make a living. Amen. So if, if, if that's the way God's working, amen. I say, hear my Lord, send me. Praise the Lord. Uh, but it's only, the only thing, only hope back to that is like Brother, Brother Scott said, when I was full time in, in the evangelistic field, I'd be gone two or three weeks at a time. Amen. I can come home. So uh, it's like a truck driver. Anybody know about truck driving life? Amen. You might get to go home every other weekend. Amen. You might get to go home for a day or two. You might, but it's just like being a truck driver. You're gone all the time. Amen. But God, it's in God's hand. You gonna pray with me? How many gonna pray with me? Say amen. amen. And in Psalms 107, now I'm not gonna preach very long, honestly. Amen. I, I'm doing just about to praise the Lord. Thank God. Because my thoughts tonight are simply on this. Amen. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Praise God. Thank God. He that is weak, let him say he's strong. Joel says that. He said, beat your uh, your your plows into 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 spears, amen. Your pruning hooks into spears, and your plows into swords, and let the weak say they're strong. Praise God. That means get ready for the battle. You're able to win the victory. You just get ready. Just get ready to fight because greater is He that's in you than He that is in the world. Amen. Do you believe that? Say amen. In Psalms 107, it says one two says. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endureth forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom He hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Thank God. So folks, we need to say that we're redeemed. Amen. There's nothing wrong with getting up and saying, praise God, when you don't feel saved, get up and say, I'm saved anyhow. Amen. What's feeling got to do with it anyway? Praise the Lord. Amen. You can't even nail down exactly what it feels like to be saved. Praise God. So you just well to give up and say, I'm saved by faith. Amen. I may not feel saved, but I know I'm saved. I may not look like I'm redeemed, but I know I'm redeemed in the name of the Lord. I might look defeated, but I'm not defeated. I've got the victory.
You know, if you sit around and, and feel sorry for yourself because of the troubles that you're going through, you will find that the enemy will cause you to remember every bad thing and forget all the good things that God's done. Amen? And you'll sit there and get feeling sorry for yourself. Amen? And if you've never been there, I'm going to shake your hand. Praise God. You're the most fortunate person in the world. Amen? Because everybody that I know has been there. Amen? Well, you just sitting there feeling sorry for yourself. Can you say amen? Y'all know I love to talk about Brother Jack Cole. Amen. He died way back before I was even knew anything about it. But anyway, he was telling of a time that he went and put his big gospel tin up in a, in a city. And said the city followed him every way. He said he had trouble out of them. They wanted to close him down. They didn't want him to put it up. They didn't want this. They didn't want that. They wanted to just shut him down. And they were, you know, they didn't want him to do anything. And he kept on and, and pressed on in. And said the weather turned bad. It got real cold. And uh, said that, you know, he'd come out there to that big old tent that would hold 30,000 people. And had 300 in there. I thought, ooh, man, what would I give just to have 300? Amen, amen. And he just got all beside himself. He said the PA system decided they didn't want to go in the blank. It didn't want to work. Amen. Everything was going wrong was going wrong. He finally just got so disgusted, he just closed the service. And he said he went out back and sat down on the running board of one of them old trucks of his. Sat down with his head. A cry and a cat, oh Lord, Lord, why? I mean, why? I mean, why is going Lord, what's going on, Lord? I can't understand it. And they're feeling sorry for Jack Cullen. All of a sudden, he heard a little boy come running around the edge of that tent there. Had braces down both legs. Had crutches in his hand. Hold the old. Come, come stumbling around through that hollow. Is the great Jack Cole here? Am I too late? Is the great Jack Cole left? I tried to get Mama and Daddy to bring me and they, they wouldn't bring me, but when they finally decided to bring me now, have I come too late? Is the great Jack Cole gone? He said, no, son. You ain't too late. Come on over here. I said, I want you to sit down right here in my lap. Amen. Get me all that again. I want to hear all that again. Amen. He said, I, I tried to get mom and daddy to bring me. They wouldn't bring me because I knew if I could get here, I knew that I knew that Jack Cole could pray for me.
feeling sorry for ourselves. Because things ain't going the way we think they ought to go. Amen. And then we're, we're so close of missing out on God. Amen. Because we're sitting there in a pity party. We're sitting there in a oh, always me. What am I going to do? Amen. We're like the children of Israel. We're standing there, Pharaoh's army. As we roar down the, the valley after them, the mountains was on either side of them. And the great ocean, the great sea is before them. And they said, Now what are we going to do? And Moses said, But he, he was the son of God, but yet he was manifested in the flesh. 
If you would have cut him, he would bleed just like he bled on the cross. Amen. If he'd have fell, he'd have cut his leg, his knee, his elbows, whatever. He 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 would have bruised what that caused he had a place to die. Yeah, he had an eternal spirit within him. That was that eternal quickening spirit that came out of the mouth of God in the beginning when he breathed life, breath into Adam, thank God, and made him a living soul. Thank God that eternal life of living comes forth out of Jesus. Oh no, and getting off on that never die Christian. No, I'm not. That person that I that makes me who I am, amen, is a spirit man that lives on the inside. And he's gonna move out of this old carnal house like Jesus moved out of his. And he moved into a glorious body. And we're gonna move in a glorious body like an under his. Thank God that's not gonna know corruption or sickness or anything else. Jesus Christ. Thank God. So we're getting ready to move out. Second Corinthians speaks about our trials and our battles that we fight. <clears throat> and some things that we're fighting in our flesh. And, and, and I, 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 I went to this scripture because it pertains to me. <laughs> Can you say amen? I went to this scripture, or God led me to this scripture, not meaning to go there directly, but God led me there. Thank God for this one reason. God knows the things I've, I've gone through here lately. And, and nobody knows the things that I, I've gone through. And I'm not going to glorify the devil and tell you all about it. Amen. I'm just going to tell you, amen, that, that God's mercy is great. Amen. Thank God. But I understand what Paul was talking about in this verse of scripture. Amen. In the 8th verse, in the 2nd Corinthians 12, and the 9th verse, 9th and 10th verse there. But back in the 8th verse there, it says, For this thing I besought the Lord quite thrice, that it might depart from me. Hello? And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in thy weakness. Mm. Most gladly, therefore, will I render glory in my afflictions. Mm. Can you say amen? So when you get sick, go ahead and glorify God. What? <laughs> glorify God in that sickness. Don't sit around and water in it. Don't sit around and self pity in it. How can you claim to be strong when people come against you? How can you 
hey, you just don't know what, what preachers have to put up with. They meant to be preachers. Amen. You just don't know what preachers' wives have to put up with to be preachers' wives. Amen. They're not even called in the ministry. They are serving in the ministry. Amen. To help the ministry. Can you say that? Right. And yet they expected, amen, to walk on water just like the preacher does. Amen. Come on, church. All right. And so therefore, we have to walk on the water every once in a while. Amen. So no, we don't, brother. <laughs> you won't last long out there if you don't. Amen. Watch me pull the rabbit out of my hand. Amen. <laughs> And I, I told pastors that, and, and, and they would just, oh, brother, they don't do that. And the pastor's wife said, yes, if I call here today, he ask the same question. He just said, amen. <laughs> amen. On Friday night, brother, at 9 o'clock, prime time on Friday night, brother, you better be ready. Amen. Rocky, watch me pull a rabbit out of my hat. Amen. <laughs> Come on. Folks want to see a magic show. Come on. They want somebody to call them out and tell them what their name is. Tell them their phone number, where they live, brother. If they don't know their name and their phone number and where they live, they sure got bad trouble. Amen. They need really help, real bad. Praise God. Come on. I don't know my phone number that well. Amen. Guess what? I've got it written down somewhere. Come on. I, when I get a learn a new address, I don't learn it right away. It takes me a while. Guess, guess what I do? I write it down. I put it in my billfold. I don't need somebody when I go to church to tell me my name and my phone number and my address number. I don't need to know these kind of things. But I can hear from God. I want to hear from the Lord. Amen. I don't want to hear from a carnal place. I don't want to hear, amen, from a side show. Amen. A media that is playing magic tricks. I don't God, you can put on all the magic shows you want. Amen. If it's not of God, it will not come of anything. Come on, church. Amen. And the church world is so full of people that I saw it won't see. Amen. It's a show. I know we're in Donovan, Missouri. No, I know we're in, I know we're in uh, Poplar Bluff, Missouri. In Revival. And uh, me and the pastor sitting there watching a Christian broadcast. They had a commercial on about a revival that was coming to town. And oh Lord, when it came on, it was it was wide open as a case now. It was man, the music was a rocking, everybody was a shouting, everybody was in the spirit. There was a choir up there that was dancing on that platform. There was man, there was music of every kind. And they cutting that preacher up there, a, a, a sweating and a spitting and a hollering and a carrying on and a jumping and, and doing all this. And I said, Whoa, brother! Because I'm in trouble. Because if I got to put on a production like that, amen, to have revival, I might look back up and go back to Alabama. Amen. Because I ain't got no band like that. I said, I don't have a choir like that. I said, I don't even have a suit of clothes. Amen. Set you don't need. 
thank God. Thank God. And no, I don't have to go and get a prophet somewhere to prophesy over me. I can get in my prayer closet. Where did I, you know where I got ministered to most of my life when I was growing up? Out in the woods. I had a pine ticket there near, near my house in Alabama. And I had a I had a path walk down from that tree to that tree. Amen. Sister Green's sister lived across the road there. She called her once while I said, Everything all right over there? She said, Yeah, well, what's something about? Oh, I'm outside there. I heard Jimmy do my carrot on the road. I'm going to make sure everything's okay. Amen. <laughs> oh, he's just out there praying. Amen. He's just out there praying. God ministry, that's where you're going to get it. Amen. One preacher, he was he was reading every, every preacher's book that was put out. Trying to find out what they did to get their ministry going. And his wife came through and said, Honey, who's the book you're reading today? I said, I'm, I'm reading uh, W.B. Grant's book. Amen. Trying to find out what it took to get the ministry. Working in his life. They say, you know what she come through? Said, well, whose book are you reading now? William Brandon's book. I'm reading William Brandon's book. Amen. A few weeks later, he come by and said, well, who are you reading now? I said, I'm reading R.W. Sandbox. Boy, he's reading all of them. And she stopped and said, huh? You reckon whose book they were reading to get their ministry off the ground? Mm -hmm. Yes, can you say amen? Yes. Whose book was they reading? Thank God. They were reading the book of the Word of the Lord, thank God. That Word of God, brother, that you can use. He said, my Word is not thee, even in thy mouth. If you will speak it and believe it in your heart, you can move the mountains. You can cause the mind to see you. Hebrews 11.33 He's talking about faith. Who through faith subdued kingdoms, brought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness with man Wax villain in faith. Right. Turn to fight the enemy. Amen. To fight in the enemy of the aliens. That was invading. Amen. That was invading the land. Thank God. But it said that he would wax strong. Thank God. And that through this, amen, he was made strong. Through witnesses, he was made strong. Aren't you glad that no matter what the battle is, as David, amen, proclaimed, the battle is not mine, but it is thine, Lord. Amen. And as he told the enemy, that this, of course, that verse of Scripture was obtained in Lot to David himself. Amen. That he, he fought the enemy because he knew who was on the side. Church, don't back down from the battle because you don't want to fight. Amen. Because you're afraid to fight. Hello? Because you're afraid that you're not able to win the victory. But see, that's where this faith comes in. That faith says, Amen, you're already the winner. Amen. That faith says, If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. Amen. That faith says, Devil, I don't care how big you look. Amen. My God's able to deliver. <laughs> Amen. Whether they say cancer or whether they say whatever, Amen. It's 
say, my God. It's bigger than that devil. Amen. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. <laughs> We've had to fight those battles. Amen. I just fought a big battle just a year or so ago. Amen. And, and I should have died, to be honest with you. But God said, not yet. Thank you, Lord. Can you say amen? Amen. Because you know there's an artery in your heart that they say is the widow man. You know what I'm talking about? Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. It's the main artery on the foot part of your heart that you get blockage in it usually you don't even have time to make it to the hospital. You're dead in just a moment. I had two blockages in it. In that main artery. In that main widow man is the top of about. Amen. But God said, no, nah, not yet. Amen. I make a way. I can So, Brother Greg, why? But I'm like Paul. But I don't know why I've gone through some of these things. But the Lord said to me, My grace is sufficient. Amen. Amen. My faith in God has been made strong. No one thank God that God is able. And God is able. God is able to sustain me. God is able to bring me back from the ranks. Amen. Of death and hell. Praise God. Say, no, not yet. Amen. Well, I got a point in time for it, but I'm not going to let it be right now. It might have been the point in time, but somebody prayed. Somebody got a hold of God and said, the Lord said, well, I'll give you 15 more years. Thank you. 